Hey guys, this is Rob from Concert Junkies, Rob and John, and I'm sitting here with Joe. Um, due to the coronavirus and everything else, um, that's why you haven't seen me on screen, but I've been a lot behind the scenes. So we're going to get into, uh, and I want to thank you guys for being patient and staying tuned with us. Appreciate it. So we're, um, actually we have a fun thing for you. Um, I'm not going to be the interviewer today. I'm going to be the interviewer. I'm taking over. Just taking over for right now. Mm -hmm. So we had a few people ask us a few questions, and uh, we're gonna go in. We're gonna go into it. Yep. Uh, got a couple of questions that I wanted to ask Rob. Uh, a few questions from Sam. If you're watching, these are your questions at the bottom. And uh, this idea wasn't it Kim's idea? Yeah, it was Kim's, Kim's idea was. So, so hi Kim, hi Kim and Sam. So, gonna get to know uh, Rob, the big head honcho here. Uh, dive into his world a little bit. So, let's get going. You ready? Yep. All right. All right. So, what's your favorite type of music, Rob? I'm more of a metal head, but I do have a soft spot for. 90s rap and pretty much anything. I don't do K-pop. Alright. So would you say K-pop's your least favorite? Least favorite and Nickelback's music. Anything general. by Nickelback? Anything. Alright. Another Nickelback hater. I have my reasons. Is it because they wear sunglasses at night? No, that was Corey Hart, but thanks, but no thanks. Um, <laughs> that's, an that's another story at a different time. Stay tuned for that. <clears throat> no, the Nickelback thing is... Kroger doesn't know what the hell he's talking about when he does an interview. Ooh, hot take. Yeah, when you go after... Tory, uh, Corey Taylor, that's a big no-no in my eyes. Everybody else in the band, I don't know. I mean, I don't know any of these people personally, but if they had a band by themselves, I would support them. So it's pretty much just Chad Kroger for you. Yeah. Rubs me the wrong way. Very much so. So no rubbing on the rob. No. Moving on. Uh, what music have you come, come around to appreciate? That you didn't appreciate previously, but you appreciate more now. As a um, Rockabilly, actually. And what, what brought you around to Rockabilly? So I did an interview with Brandon and the Bazookas recently, and it's pretty catchy. I, I mean, I wouldn't have thought I would like Rockabilly, but it's... I would go to a show or two. What, what, what caught you? What, what made you... Enjoy it. More of the um, mellow-ish. Like I, I don't know the right term, but it's like mellow, but you can still dance to it. It's not. It's not like this country. Then there's rockabilly. Like there, there's like in between. So, it's, would you think it's a mixture of rock and country? Almost. Yeah, I mean, I would. Th if you have to labelize it, it's more of it's rock and country in one ball. I'm not doing the Cotton Eye Joe, but I'm. Where did you come from? Where did you go? I was married a long time ago. <laughs> Please don't copyright me on that. But, <laughs> but kidding. yeah, kidding. We're all kidding here. And. uh who in the music business inspired you the most? Whether it's a band, musician, uh, to interviewer. To like, start this or in just a whole well, room of everything? Well, to start this and in general. Um, it was Matt Pinfield, actually, that started me to wanting to do this when I was actually young. Musically wise... I was a pro jam Nirvana. Like I grew up in the '90s, so like 
was born in the eighties, but you know the grunge era to. There's what do you call it? Yeah, you know, the Nirvanas, the Pearl Jams, and whatnot. Yeah, like that started. Like, of course, Metallica and everybody else, you know, like, who's ever on MTV at that moment? So, like, that's where, like, my first CD ever was Pearl Jam 10. The tape and the cassette. Then Guns N' Roses, and then Alice in Chains, and Nirvana. Pretty much, I'm not going to say all mainstream, you know, not all the mainstream stuff, but, like, it's not, and, you know, like, there's a lot of music that, what do you call it, came out in the 90s that, I would, <clears throat> you wouldn't think I'd listen to. Okay. Well, what were some of the bands that people wouldn't think you would listen to, besides, you know, the obvious Metallica's, Corns, and Pearl Jam's? Counting Crows, um, SWV, you know, I, I'm trying to think of the other one, like TLC, if you go through my CD collection, it would be like, wow, but, yeah, I, I had the TLC album, I had, what do you call it, um, Alanis Morissette, and Tori Amos, and... Very well rounded in that aspect. So musically, you had you had your core of heavy metal and rock, but you had and, outside influences as well. And rap, and yeah, I had Wu Tang, I had Nas, I had Wu Tang's for the Children, Tupac, Snoop Dogg, Dre. Not to, maybe one or two N.W.A. albums. Now, how did Matt Pinfield himself influence you? What what made him? So what I, made I, you I, want I always to... wanted to see what he was going to do next. Who his next interview was? Like he was on Headbangers Ball. He was on Sixty Minutes. I think it was Sixty Minutes. I'm I'm dating myself here, but I think it was like Sixty Minutes. So it was. He did interviews and then there was music videos and it was just one of those things like, ooh, I want to do that when I grow up. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you watching a baseball game, I want to be on that mound or football for you, well, baseball, football for you, that yeah. I want to be there. I want to do that. <clears throat> Here you are, doing it, Rob. I uh, yeah, the best that I that I can at the moment due to lovely Corona. She needs to go bye bye. Yeah. If you guys think he's doing a good job, drop a like, hit the like button, drop the comment. Let him know what he's doing great because he's doing great. Okay, these next two questions are from Sam. Um, what was the best music ever created, in your opinion? That's very hard. I'm going to say grunge at the time. Like, I started with grunge, then I got into it deeper. You know, like, okay, I started with grunge, then heavy metal, then, well, of course, alternative, but I'm saying it was grunge, heavy metal, alternative, to hardcore, to, what do you call it, even these guys, you know, like, there's, for me, it started with grunge, and then it tripled effect, you know, after, effect. like, it snowballed, after, ooh, the first taste of, I'm gonna say Jeremy from Pearl Jam, and then, Oh, I like them. Let me see who these people are. And then through other people and other things. Oh, I like, you know, 
all right, I've been to like thousands of concerts, so like it started, you know. Oh, that opener's really good. Let me see what they're about. Like everybody, everybody shits on openers. They shit on openers. They don't go see the openers. I feel that oper the openers are half the time you shit it on an opener and look what they were, where they are now. A lot of the openers were became the greats. Everybody was an opener at one point. Or main support. If you don't, if you don't, what do you call it? All right, I get it. Some people don't want to go there at seven o'clock and be there till midnight or whatever the case may be. But you know, oh, I never heard of White Flower. Name sounds pretty interesting. And you know what? You hear one. What's the worst thing that can happen? You get there at seven and you listen to half a white flower and you're not into them. You go out and smoke a cigarette and come back for the one after that or the one, you know, who you really wanted to see. What is that hurting you? It's not. You got to give everybody a fair chance, right? They, I cannot... might, they might become your next favorite band, right? Next favorite band, or start a conversation with somebody while they're, you know, if you're not really into it, you meet a new friend. Like, I never understood why whenever I went to concerts with certain people, they're like, oh, we're just going to go and see the main support and what do you call it, the person we're supposed to see. You paid the money for the ticket. You used the ticket. It could be 50 bucks to a hundred dollars or whatever the case may be. I go an hour early just to see who, I mean, I normally look, I, if I see the bill who's on it, I normally look at them before, you know, see who they are before I, if I've seen them a hundred times, I might not go because they're opener or, you know, mid tier, but. The opener is there for a reason. Yeah, they, they get you going. So, give those guys a chance. Every band was there once. Not everybody yeah. starts out as Aerosmith on the top. Not so, at all. Even Aerosmith opened. Remember that. And uh, which music types died out the most, in your opinion? Oh, wow. We know disco's dead, so that's oh, the, 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 the disco died. Um, do you think? Do you think there was any good music that actually came out of the disco era? Oh yes, I can't think of the names of the songs right now, but yeah, there was good songs that came out. I can't even I. If I hear it, I know it. I just don't know the names of the songs like that. Mm -hmm. Like, no, this. I mean, not that I was, I wasn't alive back then. But if you type, if you put in a disco record, or CD record, MP3, whatever you want to use, I guarantee you'll be dancing. Yeah, some of it could be really fun to listen to and jam out to. R&B kind of died. You think so? I think R&B kind of died. Why do you think R&B kind of died out? Big thing in the big thing in the nineties. A lot of slow jams. A lot of baby making music. Yeah, baby, you said it. I didn't. <laughs> okay, that was another topic I wanted to get on another day. But stay tuned for that one. It's not. There's no, there's no Brandy anymore, really. There's no Monica anymore. There's no, I think his name was Joe. There was no, to, um, I can't think of his name right now. But I'm saying, of, of course, there's still Usher. There's still, what do you call it, Babyface. There's still Maxwell. 
Well, there were so many in the nineties. You, know, you turn on, you turn on the radio now. Just standard radio station. I'm not saying, what do you call it, the Rat or K Rock. I'm saying, just a standard station. You're. Re- yeah, you're hearing soul jams, but you're not hearing, like, the holy shit soul jams. You know, like. I'm I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of a really um You don't hear voice to men either. You don't hear like R and B at all. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate. It really is. Like, like there are still R and B artists, but it's not what do you call it like it used to be. So I think R and B is not i I'm not saying it's dead, but it's not not on the regular rotation, unfortunately. Yeah, and I'm going to hear shit for this. I know I'm going to hear shit for this. I'm sorry, kids. Rap is not what it used to be. Whatsoever. I'm it's still good. I mean, it's still good. It still is, but it's not like our generation. Sound like the old guy. Get off our lawns, right? I, I don't mean <laughs> to be like that, but I mean, it's good. It's catchy. Some is just too raunchy. Like, I know ours wasn't that better, but. <laughs> it's like comparing apples to apples on that one. <laughs> well, that's, that's a good board game, but I'm just saying that. Our lyrical content to this lyrical content, totally different ballpark. Like, what's wor- I mean, what do you feel is worse? WAP or, um, say, Rum Shaker or Baby Got Back or what was the, what was the other? My Anaconda? That, that was... But I'm saying, like, we have we have WAP, like, oh shit, there's little ears. Then what do you call it? The Humpty Dance. I. I mean, it, I mean, like, I I would have done. I mean, the Humpty Dance. They they, they 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 did it tastefully that like as a kid you didn't really know what they were talking about but but if you're blatantly saying what the, you know WAP and Guilford Gofford did a cover of it it's freaking hysterically hysteric absolutely hilarious check it out if you haven't seen it oh my god it's hyster I'm hysterical. I couldn't stop laughing whatsoever. <laughs> I shared it. I'm on. I sent it to you, a few other people. <laughs> dead. But I'm. Se- the lyrical content now, to back when we were kids, your parents knew what the. Fu- your parents knew what they were saying. <laughs> we were just like, ooh, the Humpty Dance. <laughs> yeah. Your parents. Our parents knew exactly what they were saying. But. And you know what? Now it's like. Now we're the parents. We're, 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 <laughs> like we're the parents, and like, what did she just say? What? Did, grabbing your kid by the ear, like. It, it's crazy how t- you know the tides have turned. Like we're dancing around the Humpty Dance, and then. Next later, thing we're, you know, next like, thing we know. WAP. WAP, and we're like. Looking at each other like, did she just say what I think she just said? She did. And people were dancing. I was, I was in the store and this girl was singing it out loud. Her mother grabbed her and yeah, no. No, not at all. <laughs> the Humpty Dump. The, the, yeah. Alright, and to finish off this video because we're going on a little bit here. Okay. Um, kind of touched on it earlier with uh the uh inspired you 
question, but mm -hmm. what made you want to start the channel? What made, made you want to start Concert Junkies, Rob and John? I actually had a conversation with my friend Tony. He has his own podcast too now. Um, What's your story? It's on Spotify, Apple, wherever you can stream. Um, We were, at first, we, me and him were talking about doing something together, but it never worked out. And then... He's, he, well, he actually told, he actually said I should be do as much as I go to concerts and I knowledge that I have, I should be doing something with it. So I started, I started it and well, that's where we are today. Like I never, thanks to everybody that's being patient and with us, I never thought anything of it. I'm like, let me try this and see where it goes. And yeah, you guys are awesome. You really are. You really appreciate I, I, that. I've met some of you in person. Some I'm I'm waiting to meet once things are back in order. But um, yeah, I wouldn't be doing this for you know. A couple people told me well told me to do this, and I wouldn't be keep going if it wasn't for everybody that's been watching, or wanting to do interviews. I mean, I'm lucky enough that I'm really lucky that I have you guys still watching, even through this pandemic or whatever you want to call it. You good? Yeah. All right. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Stay tuned. we got more coming. Uh, thank you for all the bands that that's been on so far. There's a lot more coming through all over the country. Um... And if, there's any, the and if there's anybody that you want me to try to reach out to, leave your comments below, and I will try. I said try. I don't promise anything to anybody in this world. I will try to make that happen for you. Alright, All right, peace. Stay tuned. Peace out, guys. We're out. We're out.